Hello and welcome to another Inside EVs video. You join me here in Belgium with this, the new fully electric Volvo C40. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a full tour of this car, exterior, interior, specs, pricing, range, the whole bit. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a long one, but we're gonna pack a lot of info into this video. This is the new Volvo C40. Essentially underneath, it's the same car as XC40 Recharge and Polestar 2. They're built on the same CMA compact modular architecture that underpins all three cars. The C40 is a little bit different in the fact that Volvo has chosen to make this a fully electric model, which means you will never see a hybrid or fully combustion engine under the hood of a C40. It's their first battery electric across the whole range. This is quite interesting. This particular car is the twin engine version, both 150 kilowatt motors making 300 kilowatt total output, about 407 horsepower right around there. And the battery pack is same from XC40 Recharge and Polestar 2, 78 kilowatt hour gross, 75 kilowatt hour usable, which should net you, it hasn't been rated by EPA yet, I'm guessing in that 230, 240 mile range or so. But of course, range is not the full story. You always have to counteract this with DC fast charging. And based on our tests with the other versions of this car in the same chassis, it is possible to achieve uh, 150 kilowatts, but only for a short period of time. So I'm curious if we'll see Volvo expanding this charging curve. At least they claim they will. Let's start up front. This particular car is painted in Fjord blue. I'll unlock it here. You'll see the headlights go, the Thor's hammer, of course. Behind the headlights are these really neat uh, pixel headlamps in here. They're, I believe, 78 pixels per unit. Uh, in the US, we don't get all the cool Euro functionality that they get here, but essentially for the European spec versions, for our audience here overseas, um, when you're approaching a car head on, it will actually black them out. It will not blind them. And then the rest of the, the road will be lit up. You've seen this, of course, from some of our Euro videos that we've shot. That's a great technology. Wish it came to the US. Fog lights as well, which is unique. Uh, some Volvos, especially the R Designs versions, do not come with front fogs in the US. I think this car will, which is pretty exciting for me. It's loosely designed to look like XC40 Recharge. Uh, you know, you, you could definitely get the two confused from the front, but this new front end doesn't have this grill surround that the XC40 has. And then of course, underneath you have some sensors. So your radar is behind the Volvo badge here, which is why it's not metal, it's just a plastic finish. And then to continue with the sensor suite, there's a camera up here in the windshield, which now has a little bit more of a wider view. So you could see oncoming uh, traffic a little bit better. I'm gonna open up the front here because this car uh, underneath is a chassis that's designed to handle diesel, gas, mild hybrid, regular hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and a fully electric battery model. Uh, and this particular one, of course, is battery electric only in C40. So typically when you have these chassis that are supposed to hold so many different types of powertrains, you lose a front trunk, but not here. Also, uh, you've seen me say this on other Volvos, typically you can follow the Volvo logo and then you get to the hood opening, except this is the first Volvo I've ever tested where it's over here. So I think that's a little bit of a disappointment. I wish this was moved over. Um, washer fluid's really your only maintenance item that you're gonna have to work with always. And then take a look at this, enough for some cables, you can really put whatever you want down there. Not big enough for your child, thankfully, <laughs> but certainly enough for some cables and things like this. Guys, what do you think about the Fjord Blue? It's a C40 only color. Let me know in the comments what you think. I personally am super into it, but even more so than the Fjord Blue, I'm just gonna give you a little taste before we go inside. Take a look at this. This car has recycled uh, materials on the inside in the same color combo. How neat is that? It's a little, little rowdy, it's a little wild, but I really love that. We'll talk about that more when we get into the interior. In the intro of the video, you saw the back of the car, but this is really where the story changed. Overall, the height of this vehicle is six centimeters lower than XC40 Recharge. Uh, it's somewhere between four and 6% more efficient than that vehicle, thanks to the lower roof height, which is nice. You can push less air out of the way, but this is more of a design exercise. And there's some neat things I'll show you back here as well. And before that, I love this, head, or this tail light startup animation. It's just absolutely amazing. You can see these individual bricks of light is new for Volvo. I've never seen this before. And I think 
the situation was this particular light would have been too long to machine or produce in one particular element. So what Volvo did is they said, okay, we have to make this much of a gap here. We'll just copy it and make it look intentional, which I think is a great um, design trick to work around a, um, a manufacturing problem. Another manufacturing problem that I think they've worked around really well is, well, of course, when you have a hatchback design, you need a place to put rear hinges. And so to not compromise headroom, the hinges had to come up this way and they built this sort of uh, air louver looking thing. It's not functional, it's blacked out, but this houses the, um, the hinges for the rear trunk and I'll show you under here. Trunk's pretty large, especially for being one of these coupified SUVs. Could certainly fit our dogs in here. You guys are familiar with them. They would fit in here no problem with the seats down. Take a look at this too, under floor storage. So you have your charging cable in there. The US charging cable will be a different unit, but it is about the same size that Volvo provides. We would have just a NEMA 515 on the end instead of a Shuko plug. So 1.5, 1.2 kilowatts versus 3.2 kilowatts. Europeans, 230 volt charging. Gotta love that. You can really get a lot of range in Europe on a wall plug, unlike the US, you get about, in this car, maybe 40 miles of range overnight plugged in. We'll talk more about that, of course, in a bit when we get nerdy. Um, back of the car, personally, I'd go XC40 instead of C40. You know, for me, I, I just like the practicality of the full SUV, but if you're living in an urban environment, you wanna stand out a little bit, sure, I totally see the reason to go for this. We are rolling on 20-inch wheels here. Uh, and I believe 20s only for the US market as well. I will have to confirm that, but nice looking wheel combination. I don't know what the US spec tire is, but this Pirelli tire says recharge on it, which is very interesting. So it's an OE tire developed with Pirelli for this particular model of vehicle. That could be quite interesting. We'll have to see how these do in our 70 mile per hour highway range test, of course. By the way, this car is an early one, VIN number 101. We gotta love that. Start of production was six days ago from the point of this filming. Now, let's get a little nerdy. Charging, whoops, unlock. Charging, there we go. Uh-oh, why are we not opening? There we go. Um, so, type two on the top, this is a Euro spec car, and then your CCS ports at the bottom. So I believe we'll have an 11 or 12 kilowatt AC charging in the US, about 48 amps. You can set your charge limit, I think from 40 to 100% in 10% increments overnight. Again, 150 kilowatt charging, very low state of charge. You can achieve this with a warm battery. The car does have on-route preconditioning with the Google operating system. I'll show you this, it also has great route planning. So the charging's good, you can fill it up overnight. You got pretty good DC fast charging, again, with software updates to even optimize farther. So I think this is gonna be a pretty good road trip car, but of course we'll put it to the test. Um, in terms of EPA rated range, I mentioned 230 miles of range, but I haven't told you the price yet, and I will before we go inside. Base price we're expecting to be about $57,000, and that's not cheap, but I think the car feels premium enough, it gives off the right image. It's a very happy place to be. Uh, if you stay tuned for our next video, I'll have a full driving review for you coming up uh, later this week where you'll be able to see how well this car actually drives. And I think it's worth the price. This is one of those cars you have to experience for yourself to justify the extra money over some of the competition. And just in terms of build quality, safety, performance, 400 plus horsepower, I think it really carries its weight well there. So let's jump inside, go through some of the infotainment features, and we'll go from there. And before we go on the interior of the car, take a look at this. This is a cutaway of XC40 recharge, essentially the same thing as C40 from a platform standpoint. It just is the roof line that's a little different, of course, but let me just walk you through the power electronics. We'll start at the back. So you have your inverters and everything here for the rear motor. Of course, you have three different wires going in for the three phases of electricity. You have your 78 kilowatt hour gross battery pack right here. You'll notice that here in the center where the rear footwells are, there's no battery cells. That's because the floor dips down for your feet, which is great. And then you have the center spine that continues back with more cells. So 78 kilowatt hour gross, 75 kilowatt hour usable. You have some of your suspension components around here, of course. Again, more power electronics on the top. 
inverter to run the front motor. By the way, each motor is 150 kilowatts of output each, totaling 300 kilowatts, about 402 US horsepower. And that's of course at full charge, assuming high pack voltage. You have your electric AC compressor that runs on 400 volts. Everything's fully electric here, as you would imagine. Whole car really just is uh, really designed thoughtfully, really nicely, especially considering this is a combustion chassis adapted for an electric vehicle. I think they did a really good job shoehorning this battery pack in there as best as possible. Overall, there's your cutaway, and we'll now jump into the interior of the car, and I'll show you around. Jumping now into the back seat. Well, the roof line's pretty high, I have to say, for being a coupe. That's pretty impressive, or a, not necessarily a coupe, but a coupified SUV. Wow, I actually fit pretty well. I'll show you my legroom here in a second, but pretty amazing headroom uh, considering how far sloping back this roof is. And part of that is due to the scalloping here. So my head definitely touches my hair. I can feel it hitting the roof barely, but I can just scrouch down a little bit. I'm sure XC40 might do better, but with this giant glass roof, the front seat headroom is actually higher than XC40 recharge. I have to say, love the details back here. I have heated seat controls. I'll show you in a second these door handles are really nice. It's a great, great back seat. Very airy with this glass roof. Let me show you. Starting down here, oh, I love these Fjord blue carpets matching the exterior. That's so cool. Um, you can see here heated seats, two USB-C ports there. I don't know if they're 100 watt or not. Air vents, which is great. Here on the left side, this really nice material for, I guess, your speaker. Solid glass windows, as you would expect from any normal window. But take a look at this beautiful glass roof. Absolutely lovely. No shade, but not needed. Really tinted quite well, I think. Um, what else? Legroom. I have the front seat exactly where I would sit. And there is a ton of room. Also, I don't know if you can tell here, but the floor is really scalloped out for your feet because there's no battery modules under here. So this is the module for the battery pack here in the center. And then, of course, I have a lot of room for my feet down low, which is amazing. So overall, you can see here the interior is absolutely amazing. These people are loving the C40. It's in this cool studio and this uh, fish market is what it is, I believe. And uh, yep, so they're checking it out. But really neat. Love the materials here. Everything's animal free in this car, by the way. There is no leather products. But I have to say, this definitely doesn't feel like leather, but it feels nicer than Tesla's um, sort of uh, leatherette thing. I love the Swedish flag here on the seats. The little details are what do it for me. Overall, the back seat, more than acceptable. There's also a little armrest here with three cup holders is nice and it's a nice size. Gotta love that. Checking out the front seats, by the way, keyless entry so you can lock with just a touch there and then an unlock behind the door handle, which is lovely. So power seats, look at this, really nice. Gives you your state of charge right there, 70% state of charge. I love these door cards. This is very similar to combustion and electric XC40, but just really nice. This one doesn't have a pass through so you can actually put some items there, which is lovely. You have a really deep door card that goes back. One of the cool things about this car is it uses this subwoofer technology that resonates on the chassis more so than putting individual low frequency audio speakers in each door. This opens up the space for storage, which is great. There's other neat little touches too. Take a look at this, credit cards for parking passes, etc. cetera. Uh, you have your instrument cluster rear trunk over here. You also have other neat things here in the center console. This is a trash can. I'll show you how this works because it's super neat. So you have your normal center console. You can fill up your trash can here with just items, wrappers, whatever. You pull it out, dump it, and then slide it right back in place. Whoops, didn't do that properly. There we go, slid back in place closes really nice. Let's look at the front seats before we sit in. We have full lumbar control up, down, in and out. We have forward, back, up and down uh, controls for front and rear of the seat. And then of course, rear backrest positioning. We have this mix of this car between this suede and then this leatherette material that I showed you. The stitching is lovely. Color combo is great. And I know it must look a little bit weird, especially on camera to see the blue in the car, but I think it really adds to the experience. You can see other little cubby holes right here on the side, wireless phone charger, not blocked by cup holders or anything. That's really nice. Two USB-C ports there and a 12 volt. Overall, a really nice cabin. Plenty of room in the front seat. Stay tuned for our driving review, which will come. And yeah, this is such a really well thought out car. For being a coupified SUV, you really don't give up much trunk space. You really don't give up much headroom. 
and then you just gain this different styling. What do you guys think, XC40 or C40 in terms of the styling perspective? What do you say I show you some key function on the user interface and then we'll call it a video. This is your main driving display. While you're driving, you're gonna have your speed and power output. You'll have your pilot assist info here in the bottom and then you'll have your percentage, your state of charge. Interestingly, no guessometer or rated range calculation there in the screen. You just get your state of charge, um, which is an interesting approach by Volvo, but Volvo has its own range app, which you can put here in the bottom, and it'll give you your estimation of range here. And this is based on a few factors, mostly about, they say, almost 100 kilometers of previous driving. So that's about 60 miles, a big average. But then it says, hey, if you've been driving on the highway and you're going to go into the city, you can get as most up to 320. Or if you rip it on the highway, you'll come down to this 180 number. There's also a range optimizer, which is very similar to like efficiency mode or eco mode or I guess range mode. All this does is really back down the air conditioning now. But through software updates, they're actually going to optimize the functions that that feature does and it will help you extend the range on one charge by delim or by limiting ancillary components speaking of that by the way let me just show you this this is the shifter here you have reverse neutral drive there's no b mode so and then the park is a button cool shifter it's like see-through you can kind of like woo which is really nice i uh, love that shifter and um, yeah, this is quite an interesting situation because if you go here to settings and then driving, you have two regen settings, which are one pedal drive on or off. And then you have one steering firmness level. That's pretty much it for driving assistance. You have your, or I should say your driving uh, adjustments of modes and things. There's no like eco mode or sport mode. It's just kind of all there. And then in here, of course, you have off-road mode that adjusts ESP calibration and things like this. Of course, there's your safety functions like pilot assist, which is amazing. We'll go through those when we drive it. Then you have your menu with Spotify baked in. By the way, take a look at this route planning. We're here in Belgium right now. Let's say we want to go to, I don't know, uh, where do we want to go? We want to go to the Nürburgring. So we type in Nürburgring. I click this here, Nürburgring, boom. Uh, what we're going to do is it's going to take a look at some things. We're going to say, yes, we want to add charging stops because obviously we can't make it there. It's already route planned us out for us. This doesn't seem to be adding them in the time that we would have to wait. Um, maybe just because this is a pre-production car, but the production one I drove just said from here to Munich, which is a farther distance. It was like, stop here for 20 minutes, stop here for 15, stop here for 30. Did a really nice job of that. So I'll show you that in our driving review. I was pretty impressed overall. Your climate control buttons are here, so you can just click up and down in terms of temperature. You don't need to go into a separate menu to pull them up. So you can go, for example, here, hotter, colder, and then it will automatically adjust the fan. I love that you don't need to go another menu deep, which is really nice. Overall, really cool. You also have preconditioning here, so you can say, I'm going into the store, keep the car cool or warm, which is really great. Just because the car is indoors, I'm gonna shut the climate control off because it's not needed. Back to the home screen here, you have a few different other menus, but overall, a really well thought out, very nicely integrated user interface, integrates directly with Android stuff, but even if you have an iPhone, it does well. I've been so impressed with this system in Polestar. Even here, it seems to be optimized a little bit better with some of this range optimizer and also this really good range assistant guess, uh, guessometer calculation. I really like this quite a bit. Um, overall, really nice strategy. Down here, of course, you have your typical Volvo stuff, no difference. By the way, the volume knob feels a little bit nicer in this car than others. I like that quite a bit. Just a little bit stiffer. They've always been a little bit loose. And there you have it, the full tour of the C40 Recharge. I've been pretty impressed with this car. And uh, I hope you guys like the styling. Let me know because I think it looks awesome. This spec in Fjord Blue with the Fjord Blue carpets, that is the jam.